Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up server level caching on Nginx. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna set up first a reverse proxy server, which is gonna kind of sit in front of our, our regular Nginx server. And um, it's gonna take any request over port 80 in this other Nginx server, we're gonna change from port 80 to another port, and they're gonna communicate with each other over that port. And what is basically gonna happen is if the reverse proxy server sees anything that it hasn't seen before, it's gonna cache it. And then um, next time that that resource is requested, it's gonna serve directly from the reverse proxy server as opposed to going to the Nginx server and having it dynamically generated. So if that's something you wanna learn how to do, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. And what I have here is this uh, Nginx website running at this IP address ending in 129. And I'm just gonna use Chrome DevTools here to show you that there is no caching going on. So if you look at the, uh, the, the resource here under the network tab in the response header, you'll see that there's no um, indication of caching happening. And you'll see later on in this tutorial that we will ultimately see some caching indicators in the response header. So let's go ahead and first move our, uh, our Nginx website off of port 80 in preparation for the reverse proxy server. So if we open up a terminal window and I'm gonna log in via SSH to this IP address and I'm gonna edit the etc nginx sites available. And for now, this is just on the default um, configuration file. And like I said, we just want to come here and uh, stop listening on port 80. Instead, we'll listen on port 8000. So we can do system ctl restart nginx. And um, now if we try to load the, the website, obviously it won't work because port 80, it's not listening on port 80, but if we specify port 8000, we will be able to load that website. So with that in place, let's go ahead and set up the reverse proxy server. We can create a new configuration file at etc nginx sites available, and, and um, we will be implementing cache in here eventually, but I wanna separate those two concepts. So we'll call it cache.conf for now. And I'm gonna use uh, my cheat sheet over here. And for you guys, you can go down in the description and I'll have these uh, code snippets linked below so you don't have to type them from the screen if you don't want to. Um, anyway, let me just walk you through this. So we have our server block here, which is listening on port 80 now. And inside of the location block, it's pretty much gonna use this proxy pass uh, to look at the uh, upstream origin server, which we have defined up here as the server on the local host, and if you're not familiar, local host, um, the IP address for that is one, typically 127.0.0.1 and uh, on port 8000. So like we just specified, our Nginx server is running on port 8000. So that's how these two guys are gonna communicate with each other via this proxy pass. Okay, so let's save that and we will restart the Nginx server once again and just make sure everything's working still. So our, our backend Nginx server is still running on port 8000. And if we get rid of that, test it on port 80, we don't get uh, anything, which I wasn't expecting that. Um, oh, that's right, because we didn't enable the configuration file. Forgot about that. So in order to enable a Nginx configuration file, you have to create a symbolic link from the sites available directory to the sites enabled directory. So we can do that with ln-s etc nginx sites available and then the, the cache.com file. And we're just gonna link it to etc nginx sites enabled. Okay, so that's gonna create the new file here in sites enabled and any configuration files in sites enabled will become active from Nginx perspective. So now we can do that system CTL restart Nginx and this should load our Nginx web server, which is good. Okay, now at this point, we still don't have any caching going on as you can see in the response header, but let's go ahead and take care of that. Let's go ahead and implement some Nginx server level caching. So we can do that by editing our cache.conf file again, and we're just gonna modify it uh, with a few extra lines of uh, configuration. So 
Um, again, you can use the linked uh, resources in the description to get these code snippets. But basically, in the first line in this file, we're going to specify a proxy cache path at var cache nginx, and we'll take a look at that in a second. So that's where our, our physical cache is going to live on our web server at this path. It's going to be two levels deep, and um, we're going to call our keys zone custom cache. We'll, we'll reference that in just a second. Um, and uh, some other options here as far as the, the size and the... Um, uh, the timeout of inactivity. So down here in our location block, we're going to add some more uh, lines of code. Configuration, I shouldn't call this code, it's more of configuration. Um, so let's paste that in here. And we have, uh, like I said, our custom cache, which is our proxy cache. So our user defined proxy cache is. Um, uh, a directive in Nginx, and we are specifying our name for proxy cache being custom cache, and that's what we're referencing up here. So that's the connection um, between these two lines in the configuration file, and we're going to specify the the proxy cache as uh, everything's everything, meaning anything, is uh, valid for the cache at this point, and this is just for demonstration purposes. This might not be practical if you have dynamic pages that should not be cached. Um, but anyway, for the sake of demonstration, we're going to cache everything and it's going to be cached for a matter of 10 minutes. So um, the last part here is we're going to add a header to our response. So we're going to look at the response header and we'll be able to see something called X proxy cache. And we're going to give the status of the cache as the value of that. So um, let's go ahead and save this. And I do want to point out um, one one before we go on that we want to look in the var cache nginx directory, see what's in there. And actually, if we go into the var cache, was it var cache nginx ls? Var cache nginx, that directory doesn't exist yet. That's because we haven't created any cache. So um, let's let's restart nginx with system ctl restart nginx. And let's take a look, see if that directory is there. Now it's there, but it's empty. Okay, that's because we haven't made, um, we haven't visited our website yet for any cache to be created. So let's go ahead and visit our website so some cache is created. So we'll just refresh the page here. And if we look at our response center, we will see now that there is an indication of some type of cache happening. Um, the X proxy cache header. Uh, response header being here, it was a miss. That means that um, the the reverse proxy server tried to find cache in our cache location and it didn't find anything. So it just went on to the Nginx web server. The Nginx web server created it, passed it back to the reverse proxy server and the reverse proxy server cached it and also served it to us here on the screen. So um, the next time, we should be able to load this page and see a cache hit. But before we do that, let's look in our uh, var cache nginx directory, and we will see now that we have. Oops, we will see now that we have um, some cache in here. And you know, this is pretty much meaningless uh, for for most of us at this point. But once you dive down in, you'll see uh, the key name right here. And um, if you wanted to, I mean, we can real quick. Uh, just take a look at this, what this actually looks like under the hood, and you'll see the value. It's kind of garbage, gibberish, can't really make sense of it. Um, not really sure what's going on with that, but um, it's, it looks like a binary type of thing. But anyway, that's a good thing because we know that caching is happening. Let's verify that that's actually the case by uh, refreshing the page and seeing if we get a cache hit. So we'll do that, come back over here to the response header, and we do see that we have... Um, gotten a cache hit because at this point what that means is the user requested a page um, from from our website and it went right to the the reverse proxy cache server and it found a match for that and it returned it directly it never had to go back here to the nginx server so um at a very basic level that's how you set up server level caching on nginx guys if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i'll do my best to try and help you out i have some other videos here about caching as far as um, server level caching is concerned redis nginx uh, memcache all that stuff so check some of those out thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next video